yeah, I picked this movie. Uh, this is actually one of the first movies I usually always recommend to any American who's never seen an Indian film. Um, the only reason I didn't is because Cassandra and Daniel, and I had already talked to Daniel on my channel about this film already. So I, I, I wanted to pick something that nobody had seen before, or else I would have picked this movie first. I love this movie. I think this movie is, um, like a warm hug almost. Uh, I just, I, I like this movie a lot. Uh, I love the actors in it. Um, and I think it's really easily accessible to a lot of Americans. Um, in terms of able to being to digest certain Indian films. Um, and I think it's just a very simple, beautiful film. And that's all I'll say about it. And I'll let everybody else talk now. So what did you think about the movie? Anybody well, who would like to, anybody who'd like to start. Someone else has to start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll go first, I guess. Why yeah. not? Um, so I definitely... I I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I will say I, it reminded me of a lot of different things, uh, mm -hmm. namely in the mood for love in a lot of ways. I'm sure the people who've seen that probably thought the same thing. Mm. Um, not a bad thing, though. Definitely not a bad thing to be, to be compared to. Um, the other thing it just made me think of is like the world of movies that um, prove the thesis that cooking for someone is the most intimate act you can perform uh so that is like a big thing in the movie like water for chocolate or in pig even if you've mm. seen pig um i think that's always a really interesting thing especially like just as a in movies where like yearning is doing a lot of the work and there's no physical connection or no physical um like acts of love between the two people mm. it's always interesting to see like what the stand-in for that kind of thing becomes so it's the the letter writing and the the cooking and all of that kind of stuff um but yeah i thought the perform I, I mean i thought it was a really solid movie overall for sure i definitely really enjoyed it so uh yeah i think those are all the points that i have to bring up about it at the moment but yeah cool i'll go third or fourth i'm not going second <laughs> <laughs> It's such weird rules, DJ. Yeah. Well, of course, I watched it already before, and I fell in love with the movie pretty much right away. I uh, I don't remember when he passed. He already had passed, right? Um, yes. When I watched it the first time, and I just was just like, all I knew about him was like Life of Pi and just like everything here and there, like Amazing Spider-Man and um, mm -hmm. movies like that. But um, Jurassic World. He, Jurassic World, uh, yeah. But he was phenomenal and phenomenal in this film, of course. And um, I got more laughs in this this time around. I guess, you know, usually it's just a translation thing. I think last time I watched it, I watched it with um, the different subtitles or something. Um, like, it was still in English, but it was, like, poor. Like, with Amazon, if you have it on, it uh, mm. adds, like, extra stuff here and there that kind of gets lost. Um, and so I turned off the subtitles that Amazon puts, but it still keeps the uh, subtitles for um, different language. Mm. But the uh, replacement, his replacement get, get got me the most laughs this time around. No, um, that's an Yeah. Yeah. He cracked me up. I was telling you, too, like how I thought like I, there was supposed to be some kind of turnaround with him where he's going to like maybe steal the letter or do something crazy like that. But it was nothing like that. It was just some guy that just wanted a friend wanted a mentor um and so i enjoyed it um i got pretty misty eyed around um the end where he was like waiting for her not waiting for her but just like sitting there watching her and throughout the whole film too with like their letters back and forth and just how that that was their main form of communication it's just a good way to show like hey they don't even have to meet each other but they just were able to like build a friendship or a little bit more through that so yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I really like this movie a lot, too. I want to hear more people's opinions on the... I forget if it was Shaq or Shake, that character, on, on his arc. Because I the whole that whole thing kind of fell a little bit flat for me. Um, but as far as the relationship between the main two go, I really appreciated it a lot. I am always a fan of 
stories told through like the lens of like food and love um like ratatouille or you know chef or like there are dozens of examples but especially because when when emily and i were like first falling in love food was such a big thing for us and a big part of like what we bonded over and and like why every time that we got together would be like going around to la to try different places and stuff um and so I always really appreciate that when when that is a bonding experience for characters in movies. I really love how understated this movie is. Uh, I love my favorite moment in the movie probably is like the two and a half minute or however long it is uncut scene of him Um trying her food for the first time and like mm. not really fully understanding and then kind of slowly like communicating to us that this is not what he expected but it's like excellent but he's not he's not like oh my god what the fuck this is sick <laughs> <laughs> or even like the and we've seen it in movies before but just because it's played out doesn't mean it's not useful to do like when she smells uh her husband's shirt to realize that he's cheating and things like that i i actually got a lot of emotionality from what was unspoken in this movie and i think that that's probably part of why a lot of the stuff with the um shake character fell flat to me because that I know that um I don't I don't necessarily want to make this criticism because this is just like a total like cultural divide because from what I know of Indian cinema it can tend to run longer and it can tend to be um especially more so than American cinema and there was a lot of this movie that I I personally would say for my taste could have been cut out but like mm. I also spend three hours a day watching TikTok. So like watching any <laughs> longer than 90 minutes can be hard sometimes when you're watching mm. 15 second videos all day long. Um, But yeah, he was awesome in this. Uh, She was, you know, she didn't have a whole lot to do, but, but in her part, she really filled it very well. I really love the dynamic between her and the unseen character, her neighbor. Auntie. Yeah, Auntie. I didn't know if that was um a lot of like a lot of like island nations will call older women auntie. And I didn't know if that was the same thing in yeah. India. I mean, he yep. got he got called every on. uncle too. Everybody yeah, yeah. that is everybody that is older than you is auntie or uncle that is okay. not that is not in your family essentially so you, a random guy on the street that is older than you you'll say hey uncle okay or, yeah, or hey auntie he got offered a seat on the train remember um, yeah. the oh the other thing i wanted to bring up was that i didn't know prior to this movie about the this delivery service this yeah, like it's crazy me neither <laughs> It's, it's like wild, wild. yeah. Delivery yeah. server. I, I say Mumbai, but it's all over. But like, I guess that's just where a large populace is. But yeah. um, I would have loved to know that before going into it to to mm. like pay more attention to the the delivery aspects of it. The guys carrying the shit on their shoulders and like picking through all the bags and stuff. And then I saw a video of the director talking about how um when they're like doing their religious chanting on the train, that that's something that he found that they actually do that in the morning when they're doing the deliveries, it's like very serious. And it's very like, supposedly there was a study and like only one in every 6 million uh, meals goes, is delivered to the wrong person. Yep. Um, which is, I guess, was part of why that I don't know. I don't know if it was actually Harvard. the, the thing he said in the movie is actually what he's referring to. That study, he's like, oh, okay. Harvard, Harvard what came. About, it, they actually did. What about the King <laughs> of England? The, the King of England. Oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> um, um, 
and then the, the after that though when they're bringing it back home at night it's like a more loosey goosey type vibe so they can you know have their sing alongs um but yeah i w- i would have i would have like i'm sure in a couple of years when i rewatch this movie i'll pay more attention to to that aspect of it yeah cuz otherwise it's kind of like you don't really understand this this um kind of like DoorDash thing that's going on. Um, and it's kind of like this missed connection, like uh, that Keanu Reeves, like mailbox movie type thing, just like mm. connecting through letters. Um, but uh, and time. Huh? And through time. The lake house. The lake house. The lake the lake house, house. Yeah. Oh, and through, I thought you were saying a different movie. No. Um yeah, it's been in a couple different movies though. But yeah, learning learning more about that afterwards, I I I did appreciate that aspect yeah. of it more. Yeah, and it yeah, also speaks to like the idea of the whole train thing, like getting off the getting on the wrong train and ending up at the right place, like mm-hmm. one in every six million, and and the two of them end up falling in love. What about you, Emily? I liked it. I thought it was very sweet and I um, liked the themes it touched on. Like I like, you know, his sort of struggle with getting older and feeling unfulfilled and, you know, looking always over at the family across the way and, you know, feeling like he's missing something and, you know, having like this plan for his retirement and then kind of rethinking everything once he, you know, meets this woman and has, you know, everything changes and he starts to come to terms with his like age and just his, you know, uh, it was like a bit of a Christmas tale type of thing where it's like, you know, a crotchety old man turns. Christmas Carol. (laughs) Christmas Carol, sorry, thank you. (laughs) Uh, a crotchety old man becomes like softened through love but I think that it's very heartwarming nonetheless and and you know um, just really good story arcs for both of them I thought the little girl was like the cutest little girl I've ever seen in my entire life (laughs) Um, and yeah I just you know the thing like some really sort of interesting metaphors like the man upstairs being sick in bed and looking up at the fan and her thinking that looking at the fan is the only thing keeping him alive and that kind of like sparking something in what's his name the main character uh i forget fernandez yeah yeah Mr. oh also fernandez. what what is that like a yeah can you fernandez? explain that Corbin? uh i actually think that is a um i've heard there's actually a big indian actress that has the last name fernandez uh so it's it uh, i don't know uh india was colonized by a lot of people all different places from the spanish to the french to the english obviously um and so they'll let us know in the comments yeah yeah they'll let us know because i don't <laughs> let us know in the comments <laughs> <laughs> you're a natural if you think that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a very sweet movie and, and you know, just thematically things that are always going to be enjoyable to watch and, and relatable and, and, um, um, I, I agree with Will. I think there were a couple times where I, felt like it could have been trimmed down a little bit but mm. honestly overall i i didn't find myself like the last movie we watched um the indian movie all two no no the last all <laughs> two you wanted to cut kumbalani night kumbalani night yeah where like there were so many times in that movie where i was like what are we doing here like <laughs> this one i i didn't really feel like that like I didn't feel my myself mm-hmm. being like, feeling like oh, it was stretching. Over- yeah. 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 I also love that. Like you said, Corbin, uh, 
and I watched your I watched the video that you and your co-host did about this. Mm. Uh, and I don't remember if it was you or he that said it, but referred to this movie as a warm hug. And I I like that about this movie, and I like that this movie can do that, but still leave you unsatisfied mm-hmm. at the end. I yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to I talk to I wanted to talk to everybody about the end. I want I, I don't to I don't like too. it when everything is wrapped up with a bow. Yeah, it's very of. it's very commercial. It's not for me. And yeah. especially in a movie where they deal with you know things that are like this is going to sound mean, but I don't mean it that way. Like things like themes that are a little bit generic, like you know a wife who feels detached from her husband and blah blah blah, and a man getting older and like those types of things, like things that you deal with often in like pretty generic like love stories and stuff i thought it was actually really great that they didn't tie it up nicely and kind of make it generic and make it like so many other what if i I, I watched this with my wife and my cousin who had never seen it my wife had but um right when it ended she was she was really into it and then it turned to black and she put her hands up. She's like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> and she was very upset that they did not tie it up in a bow. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't know if some of you felt that exact same no, way. Yeah. I, <laughs> get that out of my, I love I the, I love the, from from my, I, I from kind my of almost did. In, movies. Movies. in like real cinema, I don't need that. That's what yeah. I, that's what I watch Christmas movies for. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. There was, yeah. For me, I feel like it makes it all the more better and just like it leaves you longing, right? It leaves it open, leaves you longing and it leaves you like thinking about it. And I just think Mm -hmm. if they tied it up in a bow, I'd be like, okay, probably wouldn't put too much thought into the movie. I mean, I'll think of the movie as a whole, but not not put too much thought into the ending. Although my wife (laughs) does. I also also think that it's just much more honest that way. Like, Mm -hmm. I think that. I think that it does a disservice to the storyline of the film and in particular, sorry, fixture you want. Uh, and in particular, like his arc as a character in the store, in this specific part of his life that like he lost his wife. He's looking continuously longingly from his porch across the way. He has in that letter, that beautiful portion where he talks about, you know, when he watched all the shows that she recorded and he watched all the shows that she recorded and he wondered why. And when he finally got to the end of it, he realized it was because he'd be out on the porch fixing his bike and he would catch her reflection of her enjoying them, watching them on the TV. And he was like, oh, I just wanted to be, to be there again. And I wish that I had looked longer back then. And I think that like, if they tie it up neatly and they go together or they wind up together, I think that he's back to circle back to what I was saying. Like, I think that it does a disservice to his, to his arc in the film because he's so unhappy with where he is knowing that his wife is gone and that now he's alone. And when he sees her and he realizes how much younger she is, I think he's only left to realize that like, Oh, well, I'm just going to leave her in the same place that I am right now. Sure. It might not be for a while and we would have some time together and it'd be beautiful, but like, yeah inevitably i will die much sooner than she will and she'll be left in the same place that i am but i mean the limited knowledge i have about indian culture is like she's not gonna really be able to take another person past that at that stage in her let that late stage in her life and like so i i enjoyed the the movie like i don't want to say dared to be uh, you know honest or like you know dared to not take the cheap out because like so many great films do but i think that that's like just one of the markers that made this film great like i like this movie a lot i agree with will i think that like it's interesting i would delineate it though like i don't think any of the character on screen moments really needed to be cut for time like i love watching him as an actor i think he's always so interesting i think that all of his choices are always really strong i think like even when he's unpacking the lunch every day and like taking that moment to smell it, like even though it's something trivial, like you see the novelty there, you see how much he's appreciating each moment and like how beautiful it is to him. And I'm engaged as a viewer. I'm not like oh, stupid, like it's a fucking lunch. Just put it down and fucking eat. Like, mm-hmm. no, I'm there and I, I enjoyed it. But like, I think that some of like the establishing or like just like the generic 
shots ran long or were unnecessary or could have been cut, you know, cut a little bit. Like also that's just nitpicky shit that like doesn't matter. I think that like ultimately on the whole, the movie was like, oh man, it was beautiful. I think that like, I, I, it's, I mean, it's interesting that so many of you, especially Will and Emily, that you guys said you weren't exposed to this, this food delivery service because i know that there's an i'm trying to remember the name of it but there's a netflix i it wasn't one of those chef's table ones it was like one of obviously wasn't one of those it was like i don't remember if it was an episode of um what the fuck anthony bourdain or if it was Mm. if it was like an episode of kitchen confidential or if it was just like a documentary but it was something and it's on netflix and they have exposure where like they show all of these women that cook all day in their kitchens and are making all of these, you know, steel tin containers, like six layer containers of food for lunch to be ordered out for everybody. Um, And I think that when you know, when you, when you have some knowledge of that, like, it's interesting to me that like this film was, was this Corbin, was this movie released outside of India? Like how big was the release outside of India for this movie? I don't know how big it was in terms of where it went. A lot of people wanted it to be sent. For it was their... at Cannes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I like, especially in 2013, I don't know how big distribution was for like theaters outside of India because it's not even huge yeah. now. Um, but they wanted, a lot of people wanted it to be sent for the Oscars for India's submission. It yeah. wasn't. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I'm not sure. So, hey, guys in the comments, let us know. Because like go, this movie going to can obviously makes sense why there's like so much exposition and like establishing of like taking all of the, the lunch pails, picking them up, taking them on the on the bikes, all of that. Like it makes sense because there's going to be a they have to assume that there's going to be a viewer base that knows nothing of this culture and knows nothing of this. Um, I will say this though that most of the time that I've found in my 400 movies that i've watched from indian cinema they almost always just make cinema for indians um and so they don't like they're not uh, oftentimes thinking about a world audience in indian cinema they're mostly even though obviously they're happy and they distribute it and they like it when obviously other people appreciate it but for the most part from what i've noticed is um they're almost always just making it for indians okay then that's yeah. interesting why they would yeah. put so much so much of that in the movie yeah. because they already know everything that's going on there but yeah I mean, just to wrap up like i love the movie i thought it was really special i thought that like you know like people have said i thought that all so much of the unspoken so much of the non-dialogue moments were my favorite moments in the movie i, I like Sheik Shek. I don't. I also don't remember which way they pronounce his name in the movie. I liked him. I thought he was. I thought he was like funny comic relief, and I also thought that he was like a necessary component to like soften him up, bring him out of his shell, whatever. But yeah, and to just name, show him softening. His, softening his name up. is Nawazuddin because he needs Sadiq. someone to have dialogue with. Yeah, exactly. To show that. Yeah. Yeah, his name's Nawazuddin Siddiqui. I can't wait for you guys to see what he's actually known for. Because he's <laughs> he's fucking brilliant, but he's normally playing a villain. Uh, oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking he's so, so right? he's so brilliant. Like he's done uh I know you got uh, some of you didn't like the film, but Ugly, uh, the director of that, Anyurag, has worked with him many times uh and gotten some absolute brilliant performances. Uh, he was in Lion. Did yeah, you he was Lion. I think it was a I tiny part Lion. though. It was a tiny part. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a long time. So, um, I I've been sitting here wondering, ignoring everything that you guys have been saying since I stopped talking because I talk and then you talk and I wait until I get to talk again. Um, um, and uh, I was wondering, what if the husband cheated on her because he was like, she doesn't give a shit about me at all anymore <laughs> other than cauliflower, <laughs> cauliflower. Give me this cauliflower she doesn't want to be she doesn't she doesn't give two shits about She's me. giving me gas <laughs> <laughs> don't make me cauliflower every day it gives me gas oh man i was so angry at him but obviously i understand his purpose in the film but i would just like <laughs> look at your wife he looked great uh, it was <laughs> such a sad scene when he was just ignoring her 
Oh, yeah. So sad. Yeah. Uh, oh, also, before uh, we get too far, this is not for you guys. This is for uh, everybody watching. Follow all these lovely people on all their social media platforms and also their uh, professional uh, endeavors. Uh, we got uh, up here a beautiful bagel makers, uh, Emily oh, and Will. Stopped. <laughs> oh, you stopped. I'm sorry. Shit. Uh, but they're beautiful and uh, wonderful. Soraya is a wonderful musician and actress. Uh, the sexy Doug down here is a, a actor. Follow him on Instagram. Uh, show sh Slide into his DMs. Cassandra is a, a wonderful actor. TJ right here is also a musician, a fantastic musician down here. And the wonderful Emmett down at the bottom is a fantastic writer. If you want to know anything about horror ever, go to him or movies in general. He's a absolute, I know he hasn't talked yet, but he is Emmett, absolutely brilliant. Emmett, what's your Twitter? At Elon Musk real. No. <laughs> I, I imagine that he's going to do a little. Musk, yeah, I will. I will. Yeah. I will. Yeah. You know, uh, it's funny. in a plexicon. All, the, all their Instagram <laughs> handles will be down on the top comment. I'll put in the description <laughs> as well. Uh, but anyways, uh, Emmett, now that I've talked to you up, what do you think about the movie? Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought it was good. Good, sweet. <laughs> TJ, so all right. TJ? We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> all right. There's my studying inside. Or, I sure mean, knowing like... the way that Corbin's channel works, we'll see you guys in three hours. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, I kind of, um, I agree with Will a little bit in, yeah. uh, <laughs> in regard to the shake character um but i do understand uh, you know i think doug was uh talking a bit about him uh about it as well where i do understand that he's sort of like a necessary counterpoint like he serves a function in the plot mm -hmm. that needs to be there and and that's totally fine um i guess it was just the story arc concerning him just sort of interested me less it's not that he was doing anything wrong performance-wise. It's not that the writing was necessarily poor or anything like that. I was Makes just sense. kind of more interested in the, like, you know, sort of uh, longing between um, uh, Irfan Khan's character and uh, uh, the wife whose name I'm forgetting now. But... Ila. Um, Ila. Ila, yes. Um, I... I'm glad that uh, Soraya brought up In the Mood for Love because that's a really good uh, comparison point. Um, I don't know if I can say I loved it as much as I loved that movie. Yeah. But I think they're also, uh, I think they're also sort of uh, looking to accomplish different things. And I think that this is um, like, this is like a perfect cross section to me of a movie that is dealing with um themes in like a, a very honest and 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 uh direct way while also making a very obvious commercial play like it mm -hmm. works as a commercial film while also it's not sort of taking the easy route on any of its sort of like thematic concerns and i think that that's a really hard tightrope to walk and i think it does it really successfully um I wish, although I think that the filmmaking style served the purpose in terms of like the focus is so much on the performances. And I think that that's a, you know, a strength of the film. I think I wish if there was a more distinctive visual style, maybe I would like ratchet it up that one extra notch for me. Mm. But those are all like nitpicks for me. It's not really like I, you know, I thought it was a pretty beautifully performed film and it's essentially a three-hander you know you're not like you're not bouncing around uh dealing with a, a, a large ensemble of of any kind so the fact that you know you're pretty perpetually engaged throughout with quiet performances it's not even dialogue heavy either um i think that's a really uh uh you know that's a sign of of the move that the movie's working um but yeah I mean, just overall i thought i thought it was pretty pretty gentle which i would just like was kind of what i needed today so that was like a lovely uh a lovely 
experience watching it with it you know it's pouring rain outside and i was in my pajamas inside cuddling with my dog and the movie is like this very sweet but not saccharine sort of gentle experience which i yeah. I, I really enjoyed yeah yeah e irfan uh the lead in this irfan khan who is probably the most recognizable i'd say indian actor most people wouldn't know his name here in america i'd say but they've seen him probably in a couple things because he's been in like spider-man movies Life of Pies, um, Jurassic Worlds, uh, Slumdog, who obviously a lot of people have seen as well. Um, but he's, he's been all the Life of Pies, all the Life of Pies, yeah, <laughs> uh, all the pies, all the flavors. Um, he was actually supposed to be in Inception. Turn off the pie. <laughs> he, he he was supposed to be in Inception. Uh, Nolan wanted him, but uh, Irfan turned Nolan down for this film. Actually. Oh, who was he supposed to play? Do you know? Uh, it's on the he internet somewhere. I think uh, <laughs> it's on the internet somewhere. I don't know the comments the below. Character. Please comments below. But um, yeah, I, he I call him one of the most effort effort eh, effortless actors I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it just doesn't even look like he's trying, um, and it's absolutely amazing. So if, if you guys in the future want to watch any Irfan Khan movies, just do it. It's he's 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 a, he's a joy to watch, and he was he was taken way too soon. Um, yeah. and it's so interesting. I want to talk to you guys about what, what about, was it just that his character wasn't as important or what was kind of annoying to you about the, um, the Nawaz's character? Um, um it was just that you weren't as interested in that, 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 um, storyline. I, I felt I had no issues specifically with him. Personally. It, pull, it pulled me out of the, um, what I was enjoying about the relationship between the two of them it was kind of detracting from what i was getting from them emotionally like what the movie was feeding me okay um before you asked me that question i had something i was gonna say Fuck, i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> tj um, why don't you talk for a second yeah. and then <laughs> and then um, we'll think sure uh well i didn't want to go last but now I'm not. um <laughs> Oh my god! So, like the giraffe, too. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, like everyone starting off. I liked this movie. Um, uh, it's. Uh, I think that some good things were brought up that kind of like made me like things more. Like Doug, that was a good thing you said about how it's like why wouldn't why was he feeling that way is like, oh, I would possibly leave her in a similar situation because I'm older. Um, um, and so that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's, don't apologize. I I love cute dogs all the time. Um, oh, there's yeah, two of them on screen. <laughs> Are there, there's three of them on all screen. All of them. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a dog okay. party. Um, but yeah, so like I, I made some notes, like just some specific things that like really stuck out to me that I did like, and then some things that I were like iffy on um, mm -hmm. to bring, which is kind of great that people weren't bringing up very specific things. So I can be the person to do that, I guess. Um, <laughs> I It was already touched on, but I really did love the anti calling up thing a lot. Um, love that dynamic. Especially the part where she's like the audacity of him not saying thank you. <laughs> and then she goes down with the peppers. With the peppers. And then does a little like shake of them, like to take them. That was great. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, that's right, Auntie. Uh, it's a little salty today. The, yeah, the salt jokes. Well, great. Yeah. And the mentioning cauliflower, the cauliflower every day um, was was really funny um and and because you're like oh wow these guys have been making cauliflower every day because he came and told him he's like we got to keep making cauliflower so <laughs> it's like it's not, not funny because the husband's being a dick but it's funny because you know why he's getting cauliflower every day and that part's funny um <laughs> getting cucked the, by <laughs> the story of the the story sorry I'm gonna have to text yes, them. So um, oh, wow. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Um, the suspected <laughs> um groping 
what kind of made me uncomfy, but like in a way that I appreciated. Because I was like, what the, like, what if, what if, like, oh, I have an analogy. Let me talk about this analogy. I'm like, why is that the analogy <laughs> that you decided to pick? Um, and that's where the letter ends too. That, that's what's so funny. Yeah, I'm like, okay. Uh, but it, at the same time, as much as it made me uncomfy, I thought it was funny. Um, then, oh, the I thought the line where he said, oh, I didn't kick the cat. Um, I actually pushed a blind man in front of a bus. Um, and he's like, so you better watch out. And just walks away. And the guy's like, what? And I like that he never actually tells him it was a joke. And I was like, this dude's sick. Like he has a sick sense of humor and I kind of like it. It's like sneaky. Uh, there's more to him than just being like this grumpy curmudgeon of a guy. Um, um, I really liked the guy, um, the supporting characters line, uh, where, he says, my mom always says, and then mm. says the line. And he's Sometimes like, I oh, you didn't have a mom. He's like, I just say my mom because it tends to mean more to people. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was kind of like a, a cute little line uh, and moment for them. Uh, oh, also the file smelling like food when they're walking out of the <laughs> office. And he's like, and why do the files always smell like carrots and onions? What's up with that? And I thought that was yeah. a really, and he starts trying to rub it, like trying to rub the smell off. Um, and I also thought another funny moment was when they're taking the wedding photo and the family just starts pouring in. And then right after the family pours in the camera, what a good use of a pan. The camera just goes <laughs> <laughs> like, as if we're like in the camera guy's perspective and being like, oh, well, I might as well just, um, so those are all moments that like, I really liked, uh, um, and I thought were funny um so so things that like kind of made me feel a little like off i guess here or there was mm -hmm. um uh i'll mention that one for last but uh oh there was a moment where when he first wrote back his long letter the first one where he started getting a little more deep i thought there was like a missed opportunity for like after at the end of his letter after saying all this stuff i wish he then commented on the food like i wish he's like also, the something something was this. Like, I'm just like, I wanted that because he was already doing that. Mm. And I expected like a least, little banter. He could have stopped eventually, but I'm like, not yet. Like, him commenting on, by the way, this was the things were delicious after he just said this was something I could have used. Um, also, the letter writing, although it was great. I, I, it, I, I hold on. I was already on. I think yeah. that would have been a little too flirty, a little bit. Because I think one of the beautiful things but, about this is that it's not really, they don't know that they're falling in love, really. Tr true. I, I get what you're saying. With that, I just feel like his not, character... well, like the, where he, When he's talking, he's talking about the first letter. letter. Uh, so at that point, no, he does not know that he's falling in love with... No. Um, well, what's her face? Well, I'm talking about the letter that when he... So it's after the spicy thing, right? And then after yeah. the spicy thing, he writes the letter after mm -hmm. he got the spicy. There's one more letter after that um, that he writes, and it's the first one where he really opens up. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I was just expecting a little comment on the food there. It's gotcha. all on that one. Where I don't even think it would have come off flirty as much as it would have come off like, I feel like he's kind of just like a very like straight shooting dude sometimes. And... Obviously, everyone in the office thinks he's like a dick. So I think he's like kind of socially unaware, even that he's a dick in some ways. Mm. Uh, so I just thought that would have been funny. But, but um, up, the letter, um, the letter writing did give you what? Can I say one thing? That, that <laughs> yes, just of course. Yeah, say your thing before you forget. Yeah. One of my favorite lines in the whole movie is is about what you're saying when when he's talking to his boss and he's like, you know that I would never cover for someone. And I thought that that was such a funny thing to say. Like, you know how much of an asshole I am. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like a really good, that's a good awareness of um, character. Uh, but yeah, the, the letter writing started to get slightly, just ever so slightly monotonous for me, which are, I, I, I wish there was like a different way to show it than the same table um shot from like 
side angle, straight on angle, this angle, this angle. Um, obviously that could be for budget restraints, who knows? Um, but it's just like, you know, it's so much reading back and forth, pen pal letter stuff. I wish there was like maybe different areas, different locations of the building. He could have been reading these letters, could have made me like, feel like I'm not watching the same thing so much. Um, him saying he had a girlfriend was weird. Why, <laughs> why do you have to go and do that? <laughs> that that's what a comment on the movie being a problem. I'm just like, bro, why was, be like, oh yeah, she's my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, it's yo. also it's also uh, weird in the cultural sense, which uh, obviously they brought up. A, a man of his age having a girlfriend is like a big no, no. Which is why she was like, yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she was like, you. I'm just like, you're just, uh, you're just supposed to like sense. sit down and die at his age in India, which I, which I guess plays a lot into the movie. And and honestly, you know, that's something where I was kind of like, well, I understand that he's older, but she's like in her thirties. Like, I don't understand like how they couldn't have like some yeah. sort of romance despite the age. But I think that looking at it culturally and like, I do feel, you know, I think anyone who gets that age probably feels a sense of like, oh, I'm old. This is wrong. Or like, I'm, what am I? I'm nothing at this point, you yeah, know? And especially I, I, in India, for sure. Yeah. So and that, that, and that is hard. And I felt that. A daddy culture in India, Corbin? So there's not, there's not a daddy culture in India. <laughs> India is not for me, though. No, it's, it's quite the opposite. It's, uh, <laughs> you're just if I mean, you, if, many, if we're like 15 years apart i don't like, know how i don't know the specific age yeah yeah That's you hard. know i do find it interesting in certain in and countries i guess where like maybe there's more of a culturally ingrained respect for the elders in a way that like doesn't necessarily exist in the culture in america yeah but there's also like a weird um othering of them and like neutering of the older generation too it's like you respect them but then you also deprive them of all yeah. like sexual agency and the ability to be seen as attractive or sexy and i find that to be a very interesting yeah uh, like way to to look at aging i guess it's just like the way different cultures approach that stuff is so interesting to me but i never I thought think, about it before yeah i think it's really interesting how in like in other cultures it's so much more common than at least for i mean maybe you guys know more people than i do but for like um the grandparent to like move in with the family when like time comes or whatever but if they don't have a family to move in with it's kind of just like well i'm just here then until i die yeah right no Which that family like that family culture is massive in india yeah, you're, you're expected to take care of your parents uh, when they get to a, a certain age, right? And the, and the they live that Will, with the you. school that Will and I went to growing up. There was a <laughs> a very large Indian contingency, and the neighborhood as well that we lived in had a had a had, was very densely populated in, in Indians. And I mean, I had a, friends that you go to their house, and there was like three if not at times four generations of people living in the same house together like yep. six six bedrooms all six bedrooms are full four bedrooms all four bedrooms are full and two of them have bunk beds and like that's just how it is but like yeah, yeah. yeah. i thought one one thing aside from that completely different and unrelated but back to the movie is that i love the foreshadowing almost if you want to take it as that no i'm not trying to raise my hand sorry <laughs> um i love the like uh if you want to take it as foreshadowing line when she says if you cook him food like that he'll get you the taj mahal and she's like the taj mahal is a tomb <laughs> I was like, oh it comes back around doesn't it it's just a pretty thing but there's nothing there yeah um I, the standing I grave oh my god that's sorry that was so depressing oh my god the standing grave. I never heard of standing graves. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In a, a vertical so grave site. In a country so dense, densely populated, and also yep. where I'm assuming that there's not super big on cremation. At, yeah. At any point you have to do. Oh that. no, they are. They are. 
Okay, yeah. then no, we'll it's it's that's the primary one, but obviously there's every religion in India. So if they're not yeah. Hindu, if they're not like a Hindu and uh, practicing um that way, then they might be Christian and want to be buried. Um so it's yeah, it's me, there's just all different kinds that. of religions and cultures in India. So yeah. I'm guessing he was more yeah. of a the Christian realm. What? But you're saying don't... something. Oh, I just said cremation. If, the, if you were going to get a vertical grave and you didn't want to stand, could you ask to get buried upside down like a fucking, you know, bat, like vampire? <laughs> I don't know, that's, maybe. I, that's super goth of you. Because that might be what <laughs> I'm doing, if that's a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to go. That's awesome. You have I, other notes, TJ? Um, I, I, do... I have two more, but I'm going to let Will go. No, no, no. I don't want to go. So, <laughs> well, now I don't want. Now I don't want to go. I'm gonna mute. I mean, I got some. I got some little things, but like, <laughs> we showed Emily's sister on the Zoom. Oh man. Um. Go ahead, TJ. Well, um, well, the last two things I was gonna say, and one's more of the over encompassing thing, but uh, a small other things. I I thought it was a interesting choice to have him smoking towards the end uh i thought it was going to be kind of like part of the arc that he stopped smoking like so, because of what she said and i thought he did but then he started he, smoking again i was kind of confused what that exactly showed me um yeah, nicotine addiction I, I think. <laughs> yeah, right <laughs> he just that <laughs> zingers from emma his twitter <laughs> handle is sin <laughs> Yeah, I think what I was trying to communicate was that he wanted to smoke and he had the ability to smoke. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. okay. Um, but plot wise, I th- sorry, Jim. That, that, that was good, Emmett. That was good. Plot wise, I think it was just more. I think how I saw it when he was started smoking again it was kind of like remember how like when he was having the nose back and forth and um, his colleague was like, "You're glowing, right? You you look ten years younger." But then mm-hmm. after the fact, after he saw her. He kind of just was accepting the fact again that he was old, so he went back to his old ways. That, that makes sense. Yeah. But then I assume that he still then I guess he had like a, a a third thought, and then I assume went after her on this train. So yeah, who maybe that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um. So you asked about the ending and like how I felt about it, and. Mm-hmm. So it's interesting because in one way it it did feel really predictable. Like I'm like, okay, this guy, he's a curmur- curmudgeon. He's going to get softened up by like this mm-hmm. cooking and these letters with this woman. And then also this guy who's his friend. So all of that was like, you know, highly predictable and could kind of like, feel where it was going and it's interesting that like i guess by the end it it doesn't end up going completely where you think it would but i'm like when there's enough predictability at the beginning do i almost want it to go there because it's been predictable so far Mm -hmm. as opposed to like a movie where i'm like always being left guessing the entire time I would expect an ending where I also am not really sure because like, I don't know if I'm the only one who thought this, but I thought they were like really setting it up for like, I'm like, okay, so this guy's cutting vegetables in his suitcase. And like, he also like, he handles the numbers and he handles this thing or whatever. And I'm like, Hmm, that'd be a really good person to help run a restaurant. And this woman's food is so amazing and he really enjoys the food and they're both enjoying the food and then this guy understands numbers so at the end they're going to open up a restaurant and it's going to get all the lunch box. <laughs> that would have been super happen. Walmart Christmas video. Wow. But, that but, I, really but, but that's the thing is that the tone of it early on felt predictable enough to I'm like that's where it was going to go but I honestly was like that'd be cute enough I'd be fine with it. Mm. Um so it was like interesting because like again i am don't want a predictable ending um but i didn't necessarily feel like the film but you did want to see their restaurant i did i i, I mean that would have come only out only because 
<laughs> only because I felt like the film was going there for me. So I'm just like, well, I'm, okay. I'm, I, I'm I'm like, I kind of want to see that movie. I'm not I'm team, I'm team wrestling. Yeah, team I know. Wrestling. It that sounds movie. cute, that right? Because no that's kind of what Ratatouille is in a way, right? Like, <laughs> I love Ratatouille, so I don't know. Speaking of the ending, what do you what do you guys actually think happened? I what do you think, think happened? I think that the lunchbox happens. That's in my brain. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> He realizes that they can't be together, but they can be together in this way. So you don't think they you don't think they ended together? You don't that, think they ended up together? I think no. they ended up together oh, no. just because uh, just I care because. way less about their relationship and I care way more about more about the rest of the <laughs> I do think I do think that they ended up together, but I obviously I'm glad that he left it open ended. Um, because if they didn't, it'd just be, I feel like that'd be too much back and forth. Yeah, for sure. The pendulum sort of thing, you know? I think that as he was going to find her, he go. saw his dead wife. <laughs> I told you, I said, here we go. <laughs> and he was like, wait. And then he sees her and she, and she tries to hide her face and she goes, you got me. And then that, and that starts like a whole new cycle of like, where's she been? Why did she not want to be with him? She's like, don't look now, I'm dead. (laughs) So when this movie started, when, when she was cooking, Emily and I have had our dinner plan tonight and I knew that like she was going to want to order in because we usually order in when we do club. And I was like, no. And then she started cooking and I said, Ask me now so that I can say no to you so that we don't have to deal with this later. And she asked me if we could have Indian food. And I said, no. <laughs> and then when, when um, the scene where Shake sits down at the table with the two bananas, which is a cute little call back to him being poor <laughs> and him saying that poor people eat two bananas. Oh my God. I love that <laughs> bit so much where it's like footage of people standing outside yeah, eating bananas right. and being poor over <laughs> His voiceover going, you know, helps me people, poop. You know, a lot of people just have two bananas. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, then when he's when when he's like try some and he tries some of it, I was like, all right, we can get Indian food. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, had so much Indian food tonight. Yeah, I am all about that. Like, I I forgot who mentioned how just like food can be used as like a love language or something like that, and it's I used- said. It's used a lot, you know, like right. in anime too. And so, as soon as she was like, when she was writing the letter, she was like, "I'm sending you paneer." I was just like, "Sext, let's go, let's <laughs> go." Yes. I actually, I actually made that paneer uh, on not on OSR, but on my mm. personal channel. It's oh, a paneer, paneer kofta. Oh, so it's probably my favorite oh. Indian thing I've ever had in my life. I made it actually the day he died. Uh, oh. Irfan died because I, I just wanted to do some. I love I love that man so much. But yeah, the the whole food thing it, that's all of Indian culture. Food is food is everything. Yeah, I want that, the that is that is I mean, how they that is how they do everything is by food. The, that is how they food. show their love. That is like Indian parents. I've learned this. I, do not tell I love you to their children. I like vocally. Uh, and so like the way they say it is that they say it, they tell me through their food, through, through all this kind of stuff. It's, it's, it's a deep, deeply cultural, obviously foods, obviously cultural in every culture is mm. probably pretty deep, but it's, just, it's especially deep in, in that's Indian. a fair trade. Do, do they mention that in an episode of master of none? That Indian parents don't say, I love There's you. There's a whole episode mm-hmm. about that, about, um, the, I don't, I think he's Korean, the Korean character's dad and Aziz Ansari's dad and about like how they relate to them and and um, how they're not really like super open about loving them and stuff. Um, oh my God. But my dad's white and he doesn't love me. So <laughs> I'm so myth busted. <laughs> uh, no, we, watched, we watched this really hilarious movie called Truth or Dare um, last great. night. It was so funny. But... There's this one Asian character and he's gay and he's like, there's this whole thing about like how he's like, ugh, my dad is like such, you know, like he's so homophobic and like, I can't, I can't tell him I'm gay. And then like his thing that he, his like truth that he has to do in front of his dad is 
tell him that he's gay and, and then like it's everything's just and the like, dad is so is accepting like, so literally funny. all this dad <laughs> wants from the character is like to go see his sick mom in the hospital and to like try and communicate with him more he's so nice to him and the the kid is just like he's gonna hate me if i tell him he's gay yeah or if i tell him i'm gay it's like god that's <laughs> so homophobic and then he like tells him and he's like everything's fine and they don't even really touch on it again and it's like <laughs> So what? What other movies do you guys want to talk about that aren't the lunchbox? Sorry. Let's talk about. That. Well, the other we're ta- uh, talking. About, speaking of food, um, I gotta go make dinner with Lauren. But uh, hey, I mean, I oh, Lauren's name is on the internet now. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, this is the back of her head. She's watching TikTok next to me. Anyways, <laughs> oh, no, uh, she's shopping on the real real. Uh, I want to uh, I want to thank everybody for for watching this movie uh, and and thank you for talking about it with me. Wait, Corbin, uh, Corbin, Corbin, let, Corbin, what what we, what we got to close this with the best I, line in the movie. Oh, oh okay, well, sorry. I had I one more thing about it. Oh, so. Okay, oh, never mind. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Buy it. Love you. Oh, I'm trying to end it, it so we can. My, <laughs> go ahead, my, talk. My go ahead, CJ. Go ahead, CJ. What's 85? your score? I heard 85. it. I heard it. I heard 95. Okay. 95. Nice. Eight, nice. 85. I'm not giving Eight I'm not giving, five my, is I'm not giving my score on the recording. Um, <laughs> we are not, it's not happening. Not now happening. they know we the do cancellation of TJ. Um, now they know we do scores. Uh <laughs> you can edit that out, Corbin. Uh but, I edit but I'm surprised that no I one don't. talked about no one talked about the part which I thought was like really intense and dark is the the story of the mother jumping off the building oh with yeah. her child her daughter yeah, yeah that was pretty cool. and like oh. and then and then the moment where he's sitting there off and obviously it's like because he's having this weird thought of like oh no is the lunchbox not going to show up and i'm like it's gonna show up come on it's gotta show up that's not what he <laughs> or it's not going to show up and the rest of this movie is going to be him trying to track this person down to start to a restaurant. Start this what restaurant called the Lunchbox. It's filled with um, blood. I like this bit that you're going with TJ. It's right. Great. He's like, not, but, not that you pass. Yeah, but I remember hearing that in the taxi, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! <laughs> like this, this movie is a warm hug, but it's pretty dark yeah. warm hug. Talking I'm, about. I'm wondering if that actually like that. happened, and they they took yeah, it from an actual event oh, that wow. was happening. Implemented it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but but so this movie, I'm glad this movie did add some like serious parts like that to not make it so light. Yeah. Um, but if it was lighter, <laughs> the lunchbox should be a restaurant. What would the restaurant be called? The lunchbox? Yeah. Ab- absolutely. <laughs> Has to be. Did you think that when they were meeting at the restaurant that they were going to meet at the restaurant and then the waiter was going to go... Man, I love working here, but we're about to close. <laughs> oh, this is so great! <laughs> yes, and TJ was like, "Here we go. We just need, we just need a new, we need a new." Hold on, idea. hold on. Did did anybody else ever think they were going to start a restaurant? No, no, absolutely. <laughs> Before I even started the movie, I was like, "This is going to be about a restaurant." This is going to be a restaurant called the Lunchbox, and oh, it's man. inside of a I, Box. Oh my god. I didn't okay. I I had a thought of it a little bit, but really it's when he was chopping the vegetables cuz it was him to be like, yeah, I can I kind of do all the things. I'm like that seems like it's a little He was going to see him chopping Maybe, vegetables no, on the she's... train and he was going to be like, that's the most incredible vegetable chopping I've ever seen. Well, Lee, because, Lee uh, here. She's that's sitting so at the table drinking water and a waiter comes over and goes, you're drinking too much of that water. You got to pay for that. And she goes, not anymore. I'm the owner. And then that's- <laughs> I mean, even in, even in the moments where um, the two actors are like sh- sharing a meal from across each other, he keeps going, this is so good. Like, she has magic hands. What is this? So I thought that he was going to push more and be like, she needs to, like, show off her talents or start a restaurant. I just thought it was, like, getting to that. I don't know. Don't don't watch a double feature of Ratatouille and Chef, DJ. Like... My uh, not on not on restaurant. My wife has. Okay, one more question. One more question. What is she drinking? Chai. It's chai. Oh, okay. It's 
if right? if an Indian if an Indian's drinking something, it's chai. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> now I know. That's a stereotype, but looked, that's that's what she was drinking. It looked good. Have you ever had chai? I mean, I mean, I've had chai. I've had not chai not Starbucks chai, tea, no. but not, and I've had it from a really good coffee shop in different variations. No, you've not had, had like chai. Indian. Okay, but have, also we, Corbin, there's like a bunch of di- like Persians also have chai, and for us, oh chai, no, I know. Can't fuck Corbin. But we're just <laughs> doing it, tea. Do it to him. It's just tea. Yeah. No, it's chai. That in word India, means tea, though. Oh, I know, but like in India, and it that's means the chai. It, it means chai. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> who heard my joke who heard my joke i did I not joke. i heard you i joke. said i said and that's the chai <laughs> uh, nice, nice. Wait, 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 i have, one, guys more, I, I have one more thing to say to make fun of tj what movie is TJ, it about? TJ, <laughs> yeah yes TJ, did you think that she was gonna send him all these interesting flavor creations in the lunchbox and that <laughs> jazz was gonna play and the colors and he was gonna go <laughs> Eggplant and butter. <laughs> no, I, I'm glad that they didn't. Like, I, I'm glad they didn't go like the food porn direction. Like that would have been like too much. Um, oh, it, was, it was pretty. I kind of wish they had because I don't know that I've ever seen that. Love it. Indian food. Okay, wait. Also, what's that green? Is it like a green bean dish at the? Be- what is that first dish? Uh the the one he it kind of looks like green yeah green i don't know what that is in the comments God. let us know because i'd actually i've never had it that. looks so good there's some there's a couple bubbles. dishes i've never seen before that i really want to try yeah home cooked indian food egg, is eggplant made like that either oh yeah in that in the documentary thing or bourdain episode i'll have to find it and share it with the chat but they talked about so one section of it was was with one of the women who cooks the lunches every day and the other section of it, the other half of it was with a family who doesn't cook because of the Westernification of Indian cuisine. Now they have fast food everywhere. And so this, their kids don't want home cooked food anymore. They just want like McDonald's and KFC and Ooh. Burger King. And like the parents are just eating KFC with them. And that's what the person was talking a lot about was like, how are you furthering your cultural awareness and the history that's so enriched in and steeped in your country is is all tied to your food if you're just eating fast food all the time and they were like oh but the kids like it and it's so hard to get them to eat you know doll and things and like it, they just want the fried chicken and it's here and it's cheap and oh wow so i wonder how much of that corbin if you know it all is like <laughs> still ongoing is still prevalent is growing it's not like i don't well that i were they were they uh nris non-resident indians like he they lived here in america no were they in india they lived in india yeah oh yeah no i uh they I, were I, our eyes our resident indians yeah <laughs> nice um yeah i mean obviously there's west there's fast food over there so it's it's very it's quite possible i don't know um i know food is obviously at least when it's um families growing up it's still very prevalent but yeah um yeah oh, and, and maybe, maybe in cities that. like mumbai and and delhi that are a lot more urban maybe it's more yeah. prevalent like that but as opposed to more rural areas where they usually always eat at home and make home cooked meals for people going to work and stuff like that so that's is the series called Cooked? Yes. Who's the host? Thank you. Michael Pollan. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's anyways. Michael Pollan's. Um, I also want to give a compliment because this movie is so much about Indian food. Indian is the one cuisine that I've never had a bad meal anytime I've ever gone to an Indian restaurant. I've never mm-hmm. had a bad meal. Nice. I don't know why that is. It's, I've had horrible Chinese food. I've had horrible Thai food. I've never had a bad experience at an Indian. It might be too spicy for me. I might need two bananas to extinguish the flame. I'm going to have to try that out. Yeah. Sometimes, but like, yeah, I've never had yeah. a bad Indian meal. That's, that's fine. What is All everyone's they... favorite Indian dish? Oh, uh, Sog paneer, is really Sog paneer is fucking yeah. amazing. That's pretty good. Uh, um, paneer kofta. I also like uh, Amritsar Kolchas. Uh, they're those are bomb. 
it's really hard. I mean, my two go tos is always like yellow, Benir, Benir kofta. yellow curry, yellow doll, and um, vegetable korma. Although mm. I need to have it made vegan, so vegan. it's usually with a coconut base. Still yeah. good, still good. Yeah, it's it's probably pretty oh, hard. Oh, and some I mean, and samosas, duh. But I mean, like I could I could eat samosas for life and just all day every day. The silliest is there's this restaurant that Will and my mom love so much. It's like the what Corbin? You keep moving around. It's like what? the it, you keep switching corners. Because I was raising my hand. Because you're moving. Oh, because because I'm just raising his hand. Oh. <laughs> um, it, well, it's like also, the it's the whitest Indian restaurant. It's called Flavor of India, and they have <laughs> on the menu it's Dolly Parton's chicken tikka masala. What? Because Whoa. Dolly Parton Flavor of India, that restaurant, the original one in Hollywood, was like her favorite restaurant. Oh, I don't, I mean, still might be. I don't know, but I and that was her favorite food. dish at the restaurant, so they named it after her. They gave that's... they gave her the name rights to it. Well, so, if we ever want to do like club favorite fucking thing to order from that restaurant if we ever want to do club in person we can uh, come here and uh, order indian food and i can make you chai i don't so want to do that it. okay <laughs> never mind bye i don't i don't know what it's called but there's a fried paneer that one of the places we order from has and i really like that a lot and then what is the other thing called alu tiki chat alu tiki chat it's, it's like okay. it's patties yeah. and it has like onions and tamarind sauce and it's a potato patty yeah potato patty potato, and then chickpeas sorry, yeah. it's so yeah. good it's really good is chicken tikka masala like tikka. down on in <laughs> india or is, it, is that like chicken. the whitest thing to it's, like it's technically not even indian food it was created in england yeah, it was like so. That's my dad's favorite. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, that's probably the most popular dish. That and butter yeah. chicken. Butter chicken is actually uh, butter chicken is so good. It's yeah, so butter good. Chicken chicken is, is, you can also butter masala. Is chana uh, masala? Good? All right, I know what I'm no, having yeah. tomorrow. No, that no, that's. I mean, all these words are Indian. Obviously, the way it's cooked is is different. Like if most Indians, if they right. come here, they'll think the food is absolute shit. That's all we ever get told. Anytime we eat food over here, really? Yeah, it's well, like the, America has some shit of the Indian worst food. Domino's I've ever had in India. So. <laughs> no, no, it's a funny story about that. Domino's, uh, is it Domino's? Yes, uh, I think it was Domino's. They serve Mexican food in India. <laughs> Really? Oh, really? Yes. That's so funny. Yes. The, the uh, we city... asked because we, we wanted to know, like, hey, how how prevalent is Mexican food in India? And mm. somebody said, I've had, like, tacos from Domino's. I'm like, what? That's like a that Domino's is. green you burrito. Had what from what? <laughs> I've heard that the McDonald's in India also has spaghetti. Yeah, uh, uh, that I don't know. I don't know. I had My that friend McDonald's went to India when we were in high school for like a study abroad type of thing, and she said that at the McDonald's they had a spaghetti dish allegedly. Oh wow, I did not. I, I, we went to we went to McDonald's, but they have a it's a they have a much a different menu in India. I didn't. I don't think I saw spaghetti. It might but, have just been a seasonal that, thing. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. Seasonal spaghetti. spaghetti like seasonal every spaghetti in yeah. India. Also, Jollibee, which is a Fil Filipino chain yes. in Los Angeles, they have spaghetti there yeah. at the at the ones in every Los Angeles. Yeah, and they put the spaghetti in the hollow hollow. That shit's so crazy. Gosh. Anyways, um, thank you guys so much for talking about this film. I'm going to go ahead and end this video uh, so we can give scores because we, we give scores to films, but uh, these chickens don't want to give it on the Internet. Uh, Just TJ wants particularly TJ, but that's because he thinks the restaurant he knocked it because a few points because it didn't end up in a restaurant. Because Anyways. I'll never get to eat at the lunchbox. What if this movie ended with them franchising a McDonald's? <laughs> Then I'd be really upset. <laughs> anyway, just let, cooking anyway, spaghetti. All the follow way. all them. I will put all their Instagram handles and and all that uh, on in the comment below and in the description. <laughs> Go follow them and harass them in their uh, DMs. Don't really, don't do that. Oh, uh, but uh, <laughs> oh, I don't know what next Indian movie we should make them watch down below. Thank you so much.